this lecture we're gonna start with some image processing so let me show you a quick video so this is a video I took with my mobile phone of a deflating balloon so it's a yellow colored balloon uh, ignore the light on the right but essentially I filled the balloon with air and let it deflate and as trivial as it seems the question is how does the radius of the balloon change over time and I know what you're thinking I mean it's a very easy problem but making the computer do this problem for you that's a bit of a challenge I've tried to make the video have a good contrast meaning visually speaking there has to be a good difference in the background and the foreground so obviously the foreground consists of a bunch of things it consists of my hand it consists of the balloon it consists of the switchboard it consists of the green light it's a night lamp but yeah it does con consist of a bunch of things and visually we can clearly make out that the balloon is changing shape over time and additionally you can see the reflection of the tube light on the balloon as well uh, over here so with all this the question is how do you make the computer do this so you may think okay um, i'm gonna find out the boundary of the balloon find out the perimeter and do the thing like that but let's see how we can achieve this using python uh, most likely for this lecture we'll not have something in octave we'll just keep things in python because opencv is a very robust library which helps us in image processing well opencv originally is made for c plus plus once you require a lot of speed you can start coding in c plus plus but in the end whatever you're doing in python is actually calling the c++ routines or c++ programs in the back end so it doesn't make a difference and this is just the starting of it i mean here it's a case of a balloon which is deflating you could extend the same logic to for example a vesicle so what is a vesicle vesicle is a membrane filled with fluid and if you have a solution which is hypertonic or hypotonic meaning the concentration of salt inside the uh, in the fluid inside the membrane is different than the fluid outside then either fluid will rush into the membrane causing it to swell or fluid will leave the membrane causing it to shrink such kinds of uh, things once you observe under the microscope you can apply this kind of image processing techniques to analyze what their change of shape is and through this very simple example I'll be demonstrating a bunch of image processing tools and I'll leave it on to you to explore further. And such kinds of things are quite useful from the point of view of scientific computing because, you know, numerics and experiments always go hand in hand. So let me close this video. In this particular uh, video, we are not gonna make use of uh, the Jupyter Lab notebook. Uh, uh, environment but rather we're going to directly write a code in python many of you have been wondering whether jupyter lab is required for doing all this the answer is no you can directly do stuff with uh, a simple plain text file as well a simple ascii encoded file as well so create a new file i've uh, navigated to my folder so i've, I've opened up the command prompt over here and i've navigated to the folder in which i have all my files so i'm, I'm doing a dir and i'll go to cd lec 41 dir okay so it contains the file under question let me increase the size a bit so that you can okay so this is the local folder that we are working with all right fair enough so on the left i have opened up a new file um so let us start writing the code so let us import 
cv2 so cv2 is the name of the library so let me save it i'm gonna save it in our folder structure 41 mm, like 41.py so we're gonna save it as .py which indicates it's a python file all right so import cv2 this helps in importing the modules which contain the image processing toolbox so this is for image processing then we're going to import numpy as numpy as np import mat well we don't need matplotlib in this particular case so never mind that so we're going to just need cv2 and numpy All right then what do we do so first things first we have a video we have a dot mp4 file now you could do many things you could use ffmpeg and export each frame of the mp4 file to a single image um, yeah that's a perfectly fine way of going about things in fact when you do high speed imaging that is how you would obtain your raw files you would obtain each frame as you go you would not obtain a single video file you'll obtain a bunch of files those will be static images but um, in python if you have a mp4 file you can read it like we had read the dot wave file in the case of audio processing so we have imported cv2 now we will use the cv2 video capture to load the file so we'll, we're gonna do the vid is equal to cv2 dot video capture then the name of the file so the name of the file is okay fit well, let me do one thing let me call it simply balloon All right so i'll call this balloon dot mp4 now once i have this what i need to do is i need to sort of read each frame of this object vid so how do i do that i say read m equal to vid dot read and this will help me acquire each frame so actually once i do this it will only read the first frame if i redo the same command over here it will read the second frame so it will read a read the image and go to the next frame once i call this again it will again read it and go to the next image so each time i do this well now you can imagine you can do this in a loop to loop over all the, the frames but yeah let me do that let me first show you how it is true so uh, while true meaning while uh, it is true and while one i mean this loop will go on forever then what you will do is you will capture the image and now you will display the image so how do you display the image so you do cv2 dot i am show i so you need to give it a title balloon deflate and then you will type down the name of the the frame so the name of the frame is img so once you execute this you have to do cv2 dot wait key one which is to ask the the computer to wait for a while one millisecond before going to the next uh, so let me save this let me go over here let me do python uh, like 41.py okay so there you go so now you you will say that okay wait there's a this error over here so why this error and the reason is once it runs out of frame to read the return value will throw an error so let let us do that let him let me print the value of ret so you will realize that it is true and suddenly it goes false so then the loop exits that's a very uh, hard way of stopping the loop but in our case it, it checks out it doesn't bother us in any way it's fine okay so this is the basic loop that you will you're gonna do in case you want to increase the delay you can simply make it 100 so then you will perceive the code 
running with a larger delay so let me run this so look there's a larger delay in the code so you can stop execution of this file by pressing ctrl c it, it sends a keyboard interrupt to the terminal and it closes everything so let me clear the screen all right so we're gonna keep it as one we're gonna keep a one millisecond delay now whatever code has to be done is gonna be inside this all right so now before going into the code section of it we must sort of understand what an image is right so let me make this while false so that we don't go into this loop now i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this So I'm reading one frame and after reading this frame, I'm going to print out what actually IMG is or np.shape IMG so that we know what this object actually is. All right. So I've saved this file. Let me execute this code. So the shape of uh, IMG is 720 cross 1280 cross 3 meaning the camera that I have on my phone I'm, I was recording it at 720p so the frame size is 720 cross 1280 and the 3 actually represent 3 channels so it has 3 channels the 3 channels are B, G and R blue, green and red so each image is composed of 3 stacks so one stack is the blue channel one stack is the green channel and one stack is the red channel so if you have a photograph which is dominant in red then the r channel will show 255 so 255 means highest value of saturation if you have something which is blue the blue channel will show a high degree of saturation if you have intermediate colors you will have some linear combination of these colors right so now uh, let me show you what these individual channels look like so let me do this so b comma g comma r is equal to cv2 dot split so this cv2 dot split command it splits the image into the three channels so img and as type float and the reason okay let me not do this first let me just do this and let me do cv2 dot I am sure this will be blue channel this will be B CV2 dot weight key 0 all right so let me execute this so this is the first frame and this shows the blue channel so in the blue channel the yellow color appears as black okay in the blue channel the yellow color appears as black okay so let me now print uh, show the red channel in the red channel the yellow color appears as white all right in the green channel don't bother with the title of the frame so i've saved this i'm gonna run this it also appears as white but notice how the bulb color has changed anyway so this is how you can split but now what i want to do is i want to do some arithmetic on the image so what do i mean by doing some arithmetic on the image i will have some bgnr i would like to do some linear combination of bgnr so that the balloon is most prominent the other things are not that prominent this means I'm gonna mix the channels and create a composite image. For that, I must first export BGNR as float. This will help in doing the arithmetic later on. Now, once I've split the channels, I'm gonna create a composite image. So I'm gonna make isolate is equal to some a times or alpha or c1 times b plus c2 times g plus c3 times r okay i'm gonna do this now 
what is the purpose of doing this it will be clear so let me denote c1 as 1.5 c2 as 0 c1 as 1.5 c2 as 0 and c3 as say 0 0.5 now what it's gonna do is it's gonna take the blue channel amplified by 1.5 times and it's gonna add it to the red channel by taking half of its magnitude and now let's see how it looks so cv2 dot i am cv2 dot i am show mixed channel isolated and in fact before we show it as an image well let's see i think this is going to throw an error yeah it's not going to show anything and the reason is quite clear because this is so isolated is now of a data type float we must convert it from float to a data type which is a data type image or, or integer so we must convert it so we will say isolate or we can simply say int let's see whether this works ah, okay so it's not gonna work so we we have to do it the hard way that is isolated equal to isolated dot as type img dot d type so it's the data type of an image okay so this particular line line means whatever the data type of an image is you typecast isolated back to it now let us see whether it works perfect it works so now what have i done i have removed the green channel completely and if you remove the green channel completely you're gonna see a bunch of things lose fading out so there's no channel over here because this was predominantly green okay so you sort of see how mixing the the channels kind of works so now let me do this let me do c3 as minus let me see how it looks uh, you see that we are slowly getting towards the edge okay forget about all this the hand has become darker but this is where the edge detection will gonna will gonna work it's gonna work really nicely in fact uh, i've done the trial and error for this and if you do this it's gonna work out the best and this combination of channels was suggested to me by one of my students shreyansh darshan uh, he's a very talented person in all these kind of things and he helped me figure out the different biases of the channels okay so now let me run this and show you how it will look so look, once you do this uh, it looks as if that edge is very distinct right so things are going in the right direction okay mm. all right so actually before converting into sorry from the image what it seemed like there was some saturation in the image like these areas are saturated so we can always clip the image to something between 0 and 255 so typically the images the, the integer values are going from 0 to 255 meaning there's 256 uh, levels of information okay so we're gonna do that so isolated equal to np dot clip and we're gonna clip isolated actually we're gonna clip it before typecasting it to the data type so we're gonna clip it between 0 and 255 so let's see what this gives us and this should give ah oh, this gives nothing I've put in the coefficients incorrectly. So, G, P, R. Okay. So, let's see. 
yeah okay so once you mix those channels up this is what you obtain you obtain an image where everything is sort of darkened out excepting for the balloon and the small light shadow of the fluorescent tube uh, onto the image uh, well that's not going to be of a, a lot of concern to us because in the end it's going to work out quite well so as you can see that um, such a channel mixing gives you a nice sort of binary feel to it this is not yet binary because the data the, the data type varies from 0 to 255 we've clipped it like this but the important thing is once you threshold this image uh, it's gonna look much better so What I'm gonna do is I'm I'm gonna remove this for now, or, or I'm gonna keep it over here because we will require it later on. So I've obtained an image which is which seems like it can help even a blind person figure out what the two things are. You can see white and you can see black. So that the boundary is the balloon. Now what you need to do is you need to do two things first is you need to threshold an image so what is thresholding an image so let me circle and show you what thresholding means so imagine you have an a signal like this okay and you say that this is my threshold value So what it will do is all the values below this it will put to zero all the values above this threshold it will put to one so this is effectively binarizing your image it's gonna convert whatever image you have to either low or high okay so if you have a smooth variation like this it will convert it into something which is sharp okay so imagine you have an image sig or, or signal that goes like this and if this is the threshold value okay then what will happen the signal will be looking like this okay that is what it's you're gonna convert it into binary all right so let us go over here let us do that thresholding so we're gonna have return value comma image threshold is equal to cv2 dot threshold now you're gonna pass isolated to it the image that on which you want to apply the thresholding and you're gonna give the lower value of the, th the threshold and the where you want to threshold it to so if if i want to threshold it all the way to the top i can do that i can say any value which is larger than 50 is going to be thresholded to 255 and the type of thresholding so we can have various kinds of thresholding and the type of thresholding is going to be thresh binary meaning it's going to eventually convert it to zeros and ones so let me show you how they look so let me just show you the documentation of this so that it is clear what thresholding means So this is the channel mixing that we spoke about it's called as image blending so this is a bitwise operation we don't need that okay so this is what we're doing so if this is the original image if you do it as a binary thresholding 
if this is the threshold gray scale then all the gray scales below that will be put to white and all the gray scales above that will be put to black and this is what is going on and there's also a mode called binary inverted so it's going to take that threshold and invert it so it's quite it's quite useful in case you want to make masks or whatever so in order to make masks the useful function the useful uh, threshold functions are trunk 20 and 20 inverse meaning if you put 20 it will put everything below a certain threshold to black but above it's going to leave the image unchanged okay so these are also quite important in case you want to make masks well so here we're going to convert it to binary and let me show you the image after converting it to binary all right so let me execute the file oops I forgot to write the name this should be wait key all right so this is the thresholded image this was the original image in fact let me remove this so that the two windows are open side by side so this is the mixed channel thing and this is when it is converted into binary all right so let me close the two windows let me in fact show you what the value of image threshold will be or the maximum value of image so let us say print np dot max ngth so let me run this so it's 255 so it's converted it to max and taken the other thing to zero it's binary because there's only two levels is either zero or 255 great so uh well, this is a small thing I'd like you to look over here. Is this little hazy boundary? We don't we don't want that hazy boundary. We want it to be nice and smooth. So in, in case you want to do that, you must do what is called as a blurring operation on the image. Okay. So let me keep it like this. Let me blur the image. All right so this is the thresholded image before thresholding we're gonna apply a median blur where there's various kinds of blurs that exist there's gaussian blur there's median blur so let me show you all the functions so i'm, I'm showing it through this because um, it's easier to show all the functions so, so if this is the original image the blurring will cause it to become like this I'm trying to show you the workflow how you go around doing it. So Gaussian blur is a very popular way of doing it and it takes a Gaussian kernel and does the blurring for you. Okay. So we're gonna say img blur is equal to cv2 dot Gaussian blur. We're gonna pass the image, we're gonna pass the kernel size. So what all things you need to pass you need to pass the image on which you want to do it you want to also do the gaussian blur uh, the the kernel the size of the blur blur okay so the parameters so this is the c++ uh, version of it but the c version also works in a similar fashion okay all right so based on the kernel size it's going to figure out what the standard deviations are going to be and typically we keep it zero to keep everything normalized all right so isolated 5 comma 5 and zero so once it is done we're gonna well we can show the blurred image also so let me do that so let me say cv2 dot i am show after blurring img blur let me take this over here mix channel 
before blurring this is after blurring and this is after threshold now the threshold will be actually applied on img blur right so let me go over here this g should be a capital g okay yeah so look at the two images so this is before blurring and this is after blurring so the edges seem to have smoothened out. In fact, let me increase the size of the kernel to 10 cross 10. So you have a larger area of blurring. Have to close the windows. I need to give it an odd number. So you need to give it an odd number. You cannot give it an even number because it's going to center. And so if it's one, it's centered. If it's three, then the nearest neighbors are taken. If it's five, then two on this side, two on this side, two above, two below. Okay. That's why it needs to be an odd number. Okay. So this is the original image. This is the blurred image. So all those freckles on the boundary because of the bad lighting, sort of smoothened out once it's smoothened out you get a nice contour well there are some things going on but anyway you can actually do a median blur and get rid of that as well but we don't bother so much about that we will get a good answer regardless okay so so far we have seen the following we have seen this is the channel mixing um, once we have mixed the channels, we've performed a Gaussian blur. After doing a Gaussian blur, we've thresholded the image. These are the three basic things we have done. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna move ahead on this. And we're gonna combine all this in the form of a continuous uh, evaluation of all the frames so with this i end this particular lecture i'll see you next time bye